Good morning, watch nerds. For those of you not familiar with my channel, I concentrate on the watch, I try and give you as much information as I can without all the blurb, and not too much about my personal preferences, although that's quite difficult. What I don't tell you about is where I live, what car I drive, the amount of alcohol units I drink per week, my shoe size, or my wife's maiden name. These things barely interest me, so I'm sure they bore you to tears. Believe it or not, I used to own a version 1 of this, this being the second generation. It had a black dial, gilt hands and a green bezel. It was a really nice watch. I just got a little bit bored of it and I sold it. This version 2 caught my eye purely because of the colour. After a fair bit of haggling with an eBay seller, I picked this one up for less than half the asking price, which is pretty good considering it's mint. By the way, the full asking price on their website is £499 which from memory is a lot more than the version 1. Because I previously owned the version 1, I'll be drawing a few comparisons as I go along. As you probably know, Kokota are the same company as WatchGecko, which are a British company who originally just sold watch straps. In fact, I bought a few of their straps as well as a couple of their watches. It's worth noting this watch comes in a few iterations, so I'll leave a link to their website in the description below. And welcome to my unpaid and unsponsored review of the Kokota Sea Hunter. And here's the packaging the watch came in. It's a rather premium feeling faux leather case that takes two watches, a two year warranty card and a cleaning cloth. And this is my watch of the day. It's another diver. It's the Marm Hudson. It's a 38mm classic vintage diver with a Swiss movement. So as usual, let's start with the dimensions. Well, the case is 40mm, the lug width is 20mm, the depth is 13.5mm, which includes a slightly raised sapphire crystal with AR coating, and the lug to lug is 47mm. Once adjusted to fit my 17cm wrist, it weighs in at about 141 grams. These are a great set of dimensions for a diver, and in my opinion, the watch wears the size. In the heart of the watch is the PT5000 automatic high beam movement. This is a clone of the ETA 2824, and is produced by HK Industries. I've had this in several of my watches, and in general it's been very good, although I did have an early one with a lubrication issue. It ticks away at 28,800 beats per hour, it hacks, it hand winds, and in my experience, it can be very accurate. It's also got a power reserve of about 38 to 40 hours. In real life, this is running at plus 4 seconds a day. But let's see what it looks like on the time grapher. And this is dial up, a very good beat error, an excellent amplitude, and no complaints about the rate. The screw down crown is one of my favourite parts of the watch. It's signed with this gold tip and there is a gold ring at the base of the stem. The knurling is pretty good and whilst it doesn't engage like a premium watch, it's not bad. The Mark I version had a beta rice bracelet but they decided to put this Jubilee on the second edition. To be honest, I like them both and they're both well made. Of course, it's got solid end links but no quick release spring bars. This is a shame as there aren't any drilled lugs either. Now it tapers down from 20mm to 18mm, then back up to 20mm for the clasp. Adjustment is made using screw pins, which is always an added bonus. Like most Jubilee bracelets, it's very comfortable. The version 1 had a half mil clasp with three micro adjustments. This is a half mil clasp with only two micro adjustments, just like my Seiko Alpinist, which I also moaned about. Come on, Kokota. This is a £500 watch. Surely it deserves a better class than this. Like I said in the intro, the reason I bought this watch is because of the dial. And I wouldn't have bought it if it was any other colour, if I'm honest. Especially as I've already owned the version 1. It's a black to orange fume, and it's brushed. Honestly, I think it's a real head turner. The layout is simple, with chrome surrounded applied indices and a chrome frame date window at the 3 o'clock. I think putting it at 6 o'clock may have been even nicer, but I suppose that's just personal preference. 
At the top it reads Kokota, and above the 6 o'clock it just says Automatic, with the water resistance below that. Now the hands I describe as being cathedral, and like the indices, are filled with BGW9 loom. The loom on the version 1 was pretty weak, so had they improved it on the version 2? Well the answer is, I think so. It's initially quite bright when charged, and the hands pretty much last all night, although the indices will only give you about 5 hours. To be fair, this isn't a tall diver, so it's about as good as I'd expect. As you can see, this has got a steel bezel, whereas my last one had an epoxy resin insert. I don't know what you think, but I believe it looks fantastic against the dial. I love the way they painted the 12-3 markers in orange and the rest in black. Like my last one, the bezel actually is excellent, with no back play or bounce, and it all lines up perfectly. It's fairly tactile, and the resistance is pretty much spot on. Now let's have a little listen. The case resembles that of an Nautilus, and it's always nice to have something just a little bit unusual in the collection. It's all set in brush to a very high standard, and my only complaint is that I would like to have seen the transitions polished, just to give it a little bit of a contrast. It's got a screw down case back to aid its 200 metres of claim water resistance, which by the way, Kokota say they test each and every one for. Each colourway is made in a limited quantity, and this as you can see is number 47 of 75. Now version 1 had a sapphire case back, and although I'm not a fan of exhibition case backs on divers, I'm less of a fan of polished ones if I'm honest, and in my opinion this is a mistake, as polished case backs age very quickly. In actual fact, I've left the plastic on the back of this one, but at some stage, I may decide to brush it. I'll see about that later though. So what is my opinion of the Kokota Sea Hunter? which by the way used to be called the GO2. Well I'm disappointed with the clasp and the polished back, but otherwise it's a very nice watch. I suppose I also have to mention the price though. The version 1 from memory was £399, and I think that was about right. I can't help but think that £499 is wandering into Swiss movement territory. This watch, although quite well specced, is all about the aesthetics, and that's where Kokota have got things right. The dial accompanied by the bezel really are a nice combination and it's nicely finished off with an unusual case and a fine bracelet. So would I recommend one? Yes, if you can pick one up at the right price. At some stage, I'll probably do a head-to-head -head with the Axios flagship, which I think will be a great match. So that brings me to the end of this review. So if you enjoyed it, please click on the like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Leave your comments below and enjoy the rest of your day.